come in. Um, we have a lot of people registered for today, so I want to make sure that everyone's coming in. Uh, my name is Greg Marku, I'm one of the assistant directors of admissions. I'm sure if you've been to some of these before, you've seen me already. Uh, I want to welcome you to the uh, our webinar for the Electrical and Computer Systems Engineering Department in our School of Engineering. Um, and uh, again, it is a moderated chat. Again, if you've been to some of these before, uh, so if you submit a question via chat, it won't show up right away. It will come in through uh, our system here. I will then approve the questions as we get to the end when uh, our, our electrical and computer systems uh, people are ready to take questions, um, and then we'll answer them one at a time there. So if you've submitted a question, only submit it once. I promise we got it. Don't worry. Um, but from there, I will say goodbye and pass it on to our electrical and computer systems people. Great. Uh, welcome. Uh, to, uh, for everybody online, uh, my name is John Wen. I'm the uh, department head of the Electrical Computer and System uh, Systems Engineering. Uh, with me is uh, Rama uh, Harmonet. Uh, she's the student coordinator uh, for the uh, department. Um, so Rama, do you want to uh, say a few words to us introduce sure. yourself? Sure. Um, so I'm Rama. I'm the undergraduate uh, co student coordinator, and I'm basically here to support our ECSE students be the first line of contact for the department. Um, so I'm sure you'll be hearing a lot from me um, and seeing a lot of me. So I'll let uh, I'll let John take it from here, um, and I'm going to turn off my video so that hopefully the slideshow will be a little bit bigger for you. Great. Thank you, Rama. So today I thought uh, I would give a brief introduction of our department. I also talk a little bit about electrical engineering and also computer systems engineering uh, uh, from, from my perspective. Uh, so the, uh, hopefully with this information, it would uh, help you to make a decision of uh, which school you'll be attending uh, and uh, for the uh, next few years. Uh, and also to, to answer any questions that you may have. Uh, first, uh, you, uh, I'm sure you have heard multiple times that RPI uh, is the first engineering school in the United States and maybe in, you know, in the, um, a big part of the world. Um, and it was founded in 1824. Uh, but I particularly like this uh, uh, phrase uh, for the reason of funding uh, 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 this uh, school. Uh, and this is from Amos Eaton, for the purpose of instructing person in the application of science to the common purpose of life. And this, of course, is engineering. Uh, engineering uh, utilize science uh, to really make uh, our lives better. Now for our department, electrical engineering department, uh, we uh, actually started in early 1900s. Uh, there's a terrific article written uh, by Ken Connor, who was a former department head, uh, talking about the early days of electrical engineering in the United States, and in particular at RPI. We were one of the first three schools in the United States that uh, had an electrical engineering program. It was RPI, MIT, and Wisconsin and Madison. So we started very early, 1907, and then in 1970s, uh, so that was a program called Electrical Engineering Program, and it became a department called Electrical and Systems Engineering in the 1970s. Uh, and at the same time, there's a separate department called Electrical Power Engineering, really focused on uh, power machine, transmission, uh, uh, that type of thing. Uh, and it's a very strong and unique uh, you know, department for many years. Uh, and then in the 1980s, uh, we add a computer to the title of the system, so it became Electrical Computer and System Engineering. And around 2000, uh, we merged with the electrical power engineering. So power is now part of our department. So the, together, and now that became today, the electrical computer and systems engineering. I just want to give a bit of history uh, of uh, electrical engineering and electrical computer and systems uh, you know, engineering. I recently watched a movie called uh, The Current War. <laughs> so the, some of you might, uh, might have heard of it. Uh, it was uh, made, I think it was last year. Uh, but the uh, electrical engineering uh, 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 really uh, uh, started in mid 1800s, uh, and uh, due to uh, James Clerk Maxwell, a Scottish uh, mathematical physicist, uh, he really formalized the understanding of electromagnetism uh, in terms of both a static and dynamic, in terms of the propagation of the electromagnetic wave, and develop a very famous set of equations. Uh, you, and if you come to electrical engineering, you will study this, and, and also in physics, called Maxwell's equation. Uh, of course, uh, 
uh, electricity has been studied by uh, uh, physicists uh, uh, for uh, since uh, 1600, 1700s, uh, but the, uh, this really formalized the understanding and description uh, of uh, electromagnetism. Uh, and Benjamin Franklin, uh, uh, one of the founding fathers of uh, 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 America uh, also uh, played a key role uh, in advancing the understanding of uh, electricity through the study of lightning, for example. Uh, but the 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 uh, uh, then the, this spur uh, a tremendous progress of utilizing electricity using electromagnetism for applications, and this generated lots of applications. Really fundamentally changed. Uh, our society, our lives. So you uh, starting with telephone, Alexander Graham uh, Bell, uh, and then of course Edison, the lighting. Uh, and Edison was pushing for DC direct current system, uh, and that's the focus of that the movie. Uh, versus uh, George Westinghouse, uh, who was uh, together with uh, Nikolai Tesla, was pushing for AC distribution system. Uh, there was also question about uh, can you drive an AC motor. Uh, and Tesla uh, invented the induction motor, <clears throat> which was uh, still used today, like the car, Tesla, the car company Tesla's name after Nikola Tesla. And the, the motor they used to drive the wheels of Tesla is uh, still based on the original concept of, uh, of uh, Nikola Tesla. Uh, and there's a very nice book uh, called The Empire of Light, uh, recommend that to you. Uh, you, you know, you'd be interested in this. And of course, uh, about, you know, James Maxwell, uh, there's also an excellent book uh, about his life as well. So this is really the golden age of laying the foundation of electrical engineering. And uh, some companies still around today, like GE, uh, which is right in our backyard, uh, was due to Edison. It was originally called Edison Electric and then uh, became uh, General Electric. And Westinghouse uh, is, uh, uh, I'm more familiar with Westinghouse through appliances, but uh, you played a key role uh, in advancing the AC distribution power. And then the uh, uh, the, the next, so, so so initially it was the distribution power uh, uh, of electricity uh, to power motor, machinery, and uh, lighting. And then, of course, uh, uh, from the Maxwell equation, it's also realized uh, even the, the electromagnetic wave in the invisible region uh, can carry information, can be used uh, to uh, deliver information. So that was initially used for audio uh, information, like in radio by Marconi, <clears throat> and then later on in television combined with the uh, video information, uh, and that's in the early 1900s. And then the digital computer, uh, 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 you know, was proposed, uh, so using zeros and ones instead of the analog computer. Uh, and then came the transistors instead of vacuum cube for, uh, and then integrate a circuit to more efficiently, more uh, compactly uh, to uh, um, uh, deliver uh, the capability of digital uh, uh, computation. And then the, there's a big push in the 70s and 80s and, su and subsequent years to shrink the size, the density, increase the density of uh, uh, transistors uh, in integrated circuits and that result in microprocessor uh, and then this uh, same technology, semiconductor technologies using digital camera uh, and then the, uh, and useful power system use a switched power systems uh, such as power semiconductor, power electronics. Uh, so there are a lot of things that we use today with table granted today, like inverters in your car, you can plug in 12 volt uh, into your car battery and somehow you can power, uh, it uh, comes out to be 120 volts uh, that can power uh, your laptop, for example. Uh, and that's really thanks to the power uh, semiconductor. And then the, that's around the same time, internet uh, uh, was uh, invented uh, and as well as emails and became increasingly popular. Uh, then there's a uh, push now to integrate this into systems and more compact and personalized system uh, in personal computers, uh, smartphones, even uh, uh, smaller uh, smartphones. And now in, 20, uh, uh, in the new millennium, uh, in the new millennium, now the, there's a, a realization the uh, we can, we should really draw on how human and animals process information and make decisions, et cetera, uh, using the artificial intelligence, machine learning type of techniques. 
uh, and this spur a whole new generation uh, of application, particularly related to vision, computer vision. Uh, and, and the component, the electrical component becomes smaller, the sensors uh, and the devices uh, become, and computation device become smaller and smaller, and you became uh, the, uh, uh, so now they are all widely interconnected, uh, so the uh, spur, the uh, internet of things, which are means uh, things are your, your fridge, your, uh, your doorbell, uh, your thermostat, uh, they're all connected wirelessly. And now the, in the past decade, now we see this uh, have been applied to where we live and work uh, and in smart buildings, cities, smarter planet, uh, IBM's uh, uh, tagline for their initiative is smarter planet. And it's really to draw on uh, this wide array of sensors and computation uh, to help uh, make our uh, life and collective life better. Uh, and uh, my area is in automation and robotics, and we've seen tremendous advances and changes in that area as well. But uh, together with this wide connectivity, of course, uh, their criminals also um, uh, uh, start compromising the security uh, of our uh, system. So cybersecurity now is a very important area. So the, now, so, so if you look at all of this, that's sort of a very brief <laughs> recap of the history of uh, electrical computer and system, uh, systems engineering, you see uh, RPI graduates played a key role. Uh, Tad Hoff uh, was one of the inventors for microprocessor. Uh, Steve Sasson uh, invented digital camera. Uh, Beliga uh, invented IGPT. Uh, Ray Tomlinson was credited for uh, inventing emails. Uh, so the uh, uh, we um, uh, so RPI certainly played a, a major role and continues to to play a major role in the advance of uh, 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 you know uh, electrical engineering, electrical computer systems engineering uh, as applied uh, to the society. So that the trend uh, in terms of electrical engineering, you see, there's a, a, a strong foundation, foundational understanding of how. Uh, electricity, uh, electromagnetism uh, may be harnessed, may be utilized in various applications. So the, you see the foundational topics such as electric power, machines, and communication. How do you use electricity to deliver information? Uh, how do you network uh, uh, different uh, parts uh, of uh, information sources together? And how do you use uh, uh, feedback uh, to modify the behavior uh, of a system that's controlled, that's my area, uh, and uh, again, electricity to deliver information, uh, and uh, also the uh, how do you uh, perform computations through integrated circuits uh, and, and the computation algorithm. So that's sort of the foundation of electrical engineering. And increasingly, we see the trend of where the field is going is that we're looking at larger and larger and complex interconnected systems. And such interconnected systems are such like uh, as power system, they, uh, it could, could be transportation system. We also see, uh, see the uh, uh, you know interconnection sometimes may not be uh, and communication uh, and communication systems uh, such as uh, smartphone uh, system, but also sometimes not uh, the same principle can be applied to other systems such as as we see in the COVID nineteen right now uh, of the viral infectious disease that. Uh, the propagation of that is because uh, the human connection. Uh, so, so such uh, how do we understand such a complex system? How they evolve, and how they may be modeled, uh, understood. Uh, so that's uh, a, a, uh, a you know a strong uh, trend uh, as we are now. Also, we see uh, a lot of the study in engineering, as you seeing, you know, some of you are probably involving. Um, was involved in the, the first robotics competition or Lego robotics, uh, you see a lot of automation, but there's a strong component human. So now how does human and automation interact? And we've seen uh, that in the, uh, 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 in the Boeing um, uh, 737 MAX, you know, so how do you create a automation system that can work well together with human? That is also increasingly an important topic. 
And uh, electroengineering, uh, I'm, I'm sure many of you have attended the webinar uh, for other engineering disciplines. Uh, uh, so the, uh, uh, you know, how I see, uh, e even in my own work, uh, how the, the field has evolved is that what we do is increasingly multidisciplinary. We don't just do things narrowly in our own disciplines, but I work with mechanical engineer, I work with industrial system engineer, I even work with cognitive scientists, and also management folks. Uh, so the world is becoming uh, increasingly team-based uh, and the multidisciplinary-based. Uh, and uh, uh, the uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning are, uh, is also playing increasingly important role. And software, uh, hardware design continues to be very important, but software engineering, uh, you know, again, the, the uh, you know, recent example, I hate to pick on Boeing, but the, uh, the uh, relatively recent debacle of uh, launching uh, the uh, space um, transportation system, and, uh, uh, you know, there was a, a mistiming of the firing of the booster rocket and uh, that uh, was really because of software glitch. So how do you understand complex um, a software generated by multiple people? And that, that's also a, a important trend in what we do, okay? So the, that's kind of a quick overview of, uh, of the field. Now about specifically ECSE uh, RPI. So we have 35 faculty, we have about 28 uh, tenure, tenure track faculty who uh, focus uh, on research as well as teaching. And then we have seven lecturers uh, and senior lecturer, professor of practice, uh, whose uh, key focus, whose main focus is on teaching. Uh, so, so there are really outstanding teachers. We have close to 800 undergraduate students. Uh, we have two curricula. One is called electrical engineering. I'll be talking about them shortly. The other is called Computer and Systems Engineering, or CSE. We have a relatively small master's program, but we have a large PhD program. So many of these uh, PhD students or master's students serve as teaching assistants. So they would, uh, you know, interact, you know, with you guys if you do come here uh, as TAs or as mentors. There are also opportunities for a dual major, so you can do. Uh, electrical engineering in combination, for example, with applied physics. You can do computer systems engineering together with computer science. That is particularly popular. But you can also do something, you, you know, a little uh, bit uh, out of the beaten path, for example, with biomedical engineering, with mechanical engineering. Uh, so there are ways uh, to get two uh, majors under a belt that makes you that much more attractive to the, uh, to the employer. Uh, you know, the, when you have uh, both of the uh, majors under your degree. So let me describe a little bit uh, more about uh, each of the curriculum. So first of all, electrical engineering curriculum. So this is kind of a quick overview of how we structure our, our curriculum. So there is a set of foundational uh, subjects such as math, calculus, differential equations, stuff like that and science, uh, chemistry, physics, uh, you know, and, and sometimes, uh, you know, even biology, depending on your interests, uh, humanity and social science uh, courses, uh, a, the base, basics uh, of uh, computer science. And there, uh, there's also a set of core engineering courses uh, that you would take together with all other engineering majors. Uh, so these are basically the subjects that all engineering students should possess. Uh, and this may include, uh, uh, you know, engineering design, introduction to engineering design. This may uh, include um, uh, um, uh, uh, you, know, prob you know, probability uh, and, and things like that. Okay, so th those are the foundational courses. And then there's a set of ECSE core, uh, which is common between uh, electrical engineering and computer and system engineering. So these are the type of uh, things that all ECSE graduates should know. Uh, so we have an intro to ECSE. So that's just to get you familiarized with the discipline of ECSE with some hands-on uh, laboratory uh, measurement techniques, et cetera. And there's a uh, circuit, which is a key gateway uh, course, uh, tells you how to analyze uh, and simulate model 
uh, and construct uh, circuits to do useful things. Uh, probability for engineering applications, uh, because the world is not deterministic. You know, how do you analyze the uncertainty uh, you know, inherent in the world? Uh, and then the computer components and operations and signals and systems. So, so this is the core of all ECSE students. And then the, if you are in EE, there are a set of additional courses. Now the two curricula become a little bit different. So EE, you really need to understand electromagnetic uh, uh, fields and waves. Uh, the original stuff done by Maxwell. So you will study Maxwell's equation, for example, and uh, electric energy, this is how uh, the power system, the transmission, conversion, machines, um, that uh, we use uh, every day in our life. Uh, microelectronics technology, this is really introduce you to uh, 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 integrated circuits, uh, semiconductor, et cetera. And then the, there are a set of electives and those are, you can draw from uh, uh, you, you know, a large set of courses. Uh, so there are restricted electives, uh, which are courses uh, uh, that are uh, in our department. There's also lab elective and there are technical electives uh, that you can only take from certain departments. So the, you, depending on your, your, on your interest, you can use this elective to pursue your specific areas of interest. Then uh, there's a capstone design, which uh, will integrate uh, all this, all what you learn together. You will take, take this in your senior year. Uh, and uh, do uh, a team-based design, and usually uh, sponsored by a company. So the company with mentor will come with a specific challenge and problem, and they will mentor a team of students uh, from different backgrounds. Uh, it's a multidisciplinary, uh, uh, multidisciplinary team of students uh, to uh, 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 execute uh, the design. So that will round out your complete four years. Now it's something very similar for computer and systems engineering. It actually looks identical except for the CSE core over here. So in CSE core, you would take an additional course on computer architecture and operating system. And then you would take two courses from computer science, from foundation of computer science and intro to algorithm. I strongly recommend it to uh, to take other, there are uh, several other uh, 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 computer science courses which are uh, more software focused and algorithm focused. And uh, so with that many computer science courses, it's actually fairly easy to um, uh, uh, to actually get a dual major uh, between CSE and computer science. So you can see that the, the, the two curricula are very similar. Uh, but EE has a little bit more of a physics-based uh, uh, and hardware-based uh, uh, stuff, uh, courses that are required. And then for CSE, it's more a little bit more uh, software and uh, uh, algorithm uh, uh, type of materials. Okay, so these are the two curricula that we have. Now, uh, so, so as I mentioned, there, there are a number of uh, electives uh, that uh, you know, one can choose uh, in the, the curriculum. So how do you choose those elective courses? So we basically uh, construct a, a set of 10 concentrations to guide you through uh, the choice uh, of um, uh, your elective courses. So the, the, there, we basically organize this under three bubbles. One is um, more uh, electronics based, electronics, photonics, and computer hardware. Uh, so under that, you have four concentrations. And then under information, science, and systems, you know, so that, that's, you know, I talked about before how electromagnetic wave can carry information. So to better understand that information, and the, uh, the communication and, and, co and the coding of the information, uh, you know, either through image or through uh, other means or through audio or, uh, or, or through data, uh, there are two uh, concentrations. And in my area was a control and autonomy, we have control system and robotics automation. And there are two uh, sort of uh, um, uh, cross, uh, uh, you know, inter uh, area, uh, kind of concentration. We have AI machine learning, which really bridges over multiple areas, uh, and then power system, which also uh, uh, bridge over uh, uh, between different things. 
So the so so all of them have a certain set of recommended courses. Some are, uh, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, and, and even lab courses are recommended under the concentrations. So this will be used to guide your selection of um, uh, uh, the electives. So overall, this is how we view our curriculum. This is another way to view our curriculum. So the, our focus is to infuse design. So we don't look at uh, uh, courses as piecemeal, we look at as, as the entire curriculum. Uh, and the idea is to, uh, you know, once you decide on attaining the, uh, you know, RPI and come to ECSE department, we we'll, uh, recommend certain books. You know, these are some of the uh, you know example of the the books. You know, there are some of my favorite books. Uh, I will throw in the uh, bucket as well. But there are a set of books that sort of get you started, and these are easy, relatively easy to read uh, kind of books to understand engineering uh, and how <clears throat> uh, uh, that uh, you know in a more uh, you know, uh, uh, fictional or uh, you know setting. Uh, so the so so right off the bat, you know, before you come, you know, there's uh, some uh, uh, recommend a summer reading, and and uh, and that uh, the goal is to give the your core curriculum, the ECSE core and other core, some context, uh, and the core core uh, courses uh, uh, are intro to ECSE and, and better control. Uh, and circuits and uh, a computer component operations. Uh, so this, uh, so we emphasize using design, hands-on design. You know, so certainly we want you to understand the theory, the math, et cetera. That's very important as engineer to be able to do things quantitatively, but we are engineers after all. We want to make sure that you can get the hands-on experience and how to integrate your knowledge to de to uh, uh, in these to uh, uh, in in a design towards certain goal, uh, and then the uh, the first uh, integration point is intro to engineering design. That you draw on your information that, that you have in the first two years, freshman and sophomore year, into a design project during the summer arch. Uh, semester. That's a summer semester at the end of your sophomore year. And then you have one semester away semester and the away semester you can have co-op uh, or internship uh, or ILE or individual learning experience. Uh, and uh, that's to, you know, can, uh, to, to uh, uh, use what you have learned together with in the design course uh, towards uh, in a more practical setting. Uh, and at the same time, that uh, uh, you, you know, there are uh, other design, uh, you know, courses uh, uh, and the data intensive courses to help you to learn how to analyze the huge amount of data that the sensors uh, uh, are, uh, you know, collecting. How to make sense of the world, and then finally goes to the senior capstone design. So these are some of the key components that we try to address in our curriculum. We try to uh, regularly offer summer reading recommendation. Uh, we have uh, data uh, intensive, uh, uh, a more general uh, 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 data intensive course, more disciplinary, uh, disciplinary specific data intensive course. Uh, the the summer away experience, uh, community engagement, uh, our emphasis on hands-on experience uh, with a culminating and collaborative experience in the capstone design. So this is how I view, uh, how we collectively as faculty view our curriculum to deliver uh, the, uh, uh, the most well-rounded learning experience uh, that uh, you know, you will receive as a, a electrical computer and system engineering student. Uh, one thing, uh, you know, I remember uh, meeting the CEO of Boeing many years ago, and we were asking him, what should we teach? You know, should we uh, know what you need uh, as, a, a, you know, as a company at Boeing, and then we will teach accordingly? And he said, absolutely not. You know, we can teach students to learn the tools but we need you to teach students how to think. Okay, so our goal is to uh, to help you to develop the tools, the habit, uh, and the skills uh, to acquire new information and to learn how to learn.
Okay, so th that's uh, our goal. Uh, our uh, faculty also conduct, you know, research and this kind of a busy diagram, but uh, this are the, the pictures of uh, some of the research our faculty perform. So basically the research, uh, we are in the six areas. So I have three in the bottom, a more foundational area, uh, electronics, photonics, computer system design, energy and power, and three on top, a more algorithmic uh, type of area, control and autonomy, information science engineering, and communication and networking. So the, there are lots of opportunity for um, uh, uh, for students to engage uh, in uh, research. Uh, and we, as faculty, also try to bring uh, our research uh, into classroom as, as much as possible. For example, uh, I regularly teach robotics course. Uh, and we, you know, to bring my robotics research, what I learn in robotics, what I do, uh, in my research uh, into the classroom. Okay. Uh, and there are uh, a number of uh, research labs and we have put those, uh, the introduction of those research labs uh, online, some, some videos. So this inclu include the Power System Laboratory, uh, Social Robotics Laboratory, Meet Pepper, uh, Autonomous System, these are drones, uh, Assisted Robotics Research, that's my lab. Uh, of uh, uh, developing robots that help people, the mobility challenge people, inter-networking of things lab, uh, which uh, talks about the uh, network security and, uh, and information distribution. Uh, here is a QR code <laughs> uh, that you can uh, go straight to the links to uh, all the relevant videos. And there are um, more videos uh, on our webpage as well, or you can just go straight to our webpage. Uh, and uh, so we also have put some student videos. Uh, so right now it's mostly graduate students, but it would be still be good to uh, you to to take a look. Uh, the, the, so some of the graduate student video are really quite well done. And they talk about their research and how they like uh, this environment, uh, the city of Troy, the campus, et cetera, and what are the things you can do. And uh, some of my graduate students who are uh, featured here, uh, they were undergraduate students who decided to stay on for graduate school. Uh, so they also talk about their undergraduate uh, experience as well. So you may want to check that out. Uh, and uh, there, there's also a YouTube channel for the school engineering. Uh, so that's uh, for the entire school engineering. There are lots of videos of students, faculty, staff, et cetera. Uh, and many of those are electrical engineering and computer assistant engineering faculty and students. So I encourage you to check that out as well. Now, the, for the, so I talked about the curriculum uh, uh, at a fairly high level, the more the specific program templates, you can also find uh, those uh, program templates, the courses, the actual courses uh, that you will need uh, and the actual uh, range of elective courses that you could take, you can find those on our website as well, or just look at this uh, QR code. Okay, so the many of you, of course, uh, is thinking that, well, you know, the, I spend, uh, you know, this time, uh, money, uh, energy, uh, to go to school for the next four years, uh, is there a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow? Well, <laughs> uh, if you work hard, uh, there it is. Uh, our students are highly recruited. Uh, so this is the latest information in terms of the average salary and the range of the starting salary. And you can see the people with uh, a dual, particularly with computer science, has even higher starting salary. Uh, and the type of jobs are can range from project engineer, software engineer, to uh, hardware design engineer, chip designer, uh, system engineer, project manager, and research engineer. So there's a whole range of jobs uh, that, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the ECSE degree um, uh, can, can uh, prepare you for. So the type of companies, this is a, a sampling of the company. You have large companies such as IBM, uh, Raytheon, ABB, uh, Corning, and to, to smaller company. Um, do we have any small company here? What well, they all seem to be pretty large companies, but there are also uh, people going to start up. There are also students who actually start their own companies. Um, so that you can uh, uh, also keep that in mind. So entrepreneurship, there are also uh, courses that uh, 
foster entrepreneurship and teach you how to file patent, uh, 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 you know, watch over, uh, uh, develop intellectual property, and uh, go through the um, uh, the mechanics uh, of starting a company, that sort of thing. So th that's also a possibility. So the, as you um, uh, go through uh, the four years RPI, uh, there are uh, many opportunities to enrich your experience. Uh, there's the so lots of students engaging in undergraduate research opportunity. Of course, uh, uh, my advice is always that you should uh, uh, do well in your classroom first, uh, in your classes first, before spending extra time to do undergraduate research. Uh, undergraduate research uh, may be done for credits or for pay, you know, so you can use some of the credits, uh, you know, uh, towards the fulfillment of your degree. Uh, and uh, if you do particularly well in classes, you can also um, be, um, uh, you can also uh, um, uh, be a undergraduate course assistant uh, and in that case, uh, you can also do it for credit or pay, but basically you will help other students for the course you've done well, you've taken, then you can uh, get paid uh, to, to help uh, you know, other students. There are also the uh, a club opportunity, the, the, we have Ida Kapanu, which is the, elect the electrical engineering uh, under society. Uh, we have IEEE, <clears throat> that's, um, uh, uh, that's the uh, professional society I joined when I was a sophomore. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay. Yeah, so this looks like a spam. Okay. Uh, all right. So the um, uh, get rid of say decline. Okay. Uh, so the uh, uh, IEEE, I strongly urge you to to join IEEE, which is the uh, I, I think one of the largest professional society in the world. Uh, and Rensselaer a Formula Hybrid, you'll get to work with other engineering students to go into competition. There's an embedded hardware club, uh, which provides a lot of resource and training uh, from um, soldering to, um, uh, to uh, uh, you know, layout of um, uh, a PCB for the, um, the circuit boards. So there are uh, lots of other uh, clubs as well, but here I just focus more to, uh, those specifically related to electrical engineering. Uh, we are on Twitter, uh, on LinkedIn and Facebook, uh, and we have our webpage. So there are multiple ways to connect with the ECSE. And uh, I will encourage you to, uh, you know, reach out. If you have further questions, reach out to me, reach out to Rama. Uh, and this is my personal website. So you can take a look at my research and publication, my students, etc. I also have my own YouTube channel. It's not, you know, refined, but uh, it has a lot of video of just stuff going on in my lab. So you can get a sense of uh, the type of thing I do. Um, so the, feel free to uh, reach out to us. Uh, and if you have specific interest within certain areas, we can connect you with other students, and other faculty. So people always ask me, uh, high school students thinking about college, you know, uh, what are the, the factors uh, that, uh, uh, you know, contribute, you know, uh, that uh, you should uh, take into account in deciding on uh, your choice of college, you know, so the, so I think about, uh, my own experience many years ago, uh, and of course this was many years ago. Uh, so, uh, I just want to tell you how, uh, I end up at RPI. <laughs> so I actually, I was born in Taiwan and then I went to Singapore for high school and then went to Canada for college, uh, uh, both McGill and one semester at Toronto for master's, and then came to the United States, University of Illinois, and then I, I, my PhD actually here at RPI. And then I uh, worked at JPL um, uh, for three years before coming back here as faculty. Uh, and uh, as a faculty, I serve as a research, um, uh, 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 a research center director, as well as department heads. Uh, so the, I just want to tell you why I stay here for so long. You know, I was here as a student and then I returned as a faculty. Uh, I very much enjoy my experience. So what do I love about RPI versus, for example, I love University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana as well, but it's a very different university because a large public university with a, uh, they have a, a, over a hundred faculty electrical engineering, electrical and computer engineering, 
a uh, very different type of department, very different type of uh, you know atmosphere. But, you know, but you offer a lot, of, a lot of resource, which is also terrific. But I just uh, share with you what I love about RPI. I love about RPI, particularly the culture of RPI. Uh, and I think that's the thing you should really watch out for to get a sense of what the place is like, because you'll be there for multiple years and you'll be make lifelong, uh, uh, forming lifelong relationship and uh, friendship. Uh, and uh, so you want to make sure the culture of a place, every place has its own unique culture. You want to make sure it's compatible with you. You, you know, everybody's different and you want to uh, make sure it's compatible with your personality. So I was looking for something that's collaborative, interdisciplinary and still retain the intellectual rigor. And the finally connection to practice is very important. So the, uh, you know, we certainly emphasize math and theory, but uh, at least to me, uh, the connection to application uh, and this, uh, you know, harps back to the theme the foundation of our institute is the application of science to the common purpose purpose of life, and to me that's particularly important. So you need to ask yourself uh, how, uh, what type of uh, culture, what type of place are you looking for? What type of philosophy you're looking for, and uh, and and and, uh, and and that will be the best match for you. Okay, so the that's uh, all I have.